Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on May 8th, that is Mother's Day 2022. Uh, and so, it's a Mother's Day message, and so I just, I, I, forgive me, I'm going to be kind of using my notes a little bit here, but I want to tell you about one of the wisest moms that my wife and I ever had the opportunity to meet in our young years. And, uh, you know, I've already told you about my mom, the Greek scholar, who <laughs> used to say, if you think that, you got another think coming, which is basically the definition of metanoia, which is the word for repent. Uh, anyways, and... Uh, you know, my wife's uh, famous one, you'll never eat at the president's table with those manners, uh, you know, and uh, a new phrase that has been coined in our family, uh, it is Grandma Bolt Clean. Uh, in other words, okay, so did you clean your room? Yeah. Is it Grandma Bolt Clean? No. You know, okay, so I mean, you know, moms play a big role in our lives, don't they? And maybe you had a a, a mother, grandmother in your life that, uh, you know, had those uh, famous ways of, of influencing your life. And so, um, yeah, this morning I want to introduce you to, to that, that lady that we met a long time ago. Her name was Ruth Dare. She was the wife of Costa Dare, who was uh, the head of uh, foreign missions for Elam Fellowship back in the day. And uh, he traveled almost constantly, okay? And when he's home, he devoted himself to his children. But uh, one time when I complimented him on his children, he said, well, uh, that, that uh, compliment belongs to my wife because she raised them. All right. And so when I had the opportunity, you know, I, um, yeah, I, I was I invited her to come and do a short seminar on uh, being a mother. All right. And so she shared all about, you know, the things you would expect from a Christian mom, she, about, you know, teaching your children from the Bible. Okay. And about praying with them and helping them learn how to live and leading them into faith in Christ. But there was one thing that she said that I will never forget. And that was that uh, she said, you know, whenever a little child, you know, maybe, you know, under a year isn't really speaking yet, comes crawling over to you and starts babbling at you, she said, it's my habit to pick them up, put them on my knee, look them straight in the eye and listen to them like this is the most important thing I'm going to hear all day. When I asked why she did that, she said, well, because by the time you can understand them, they'll have already figured out you really aren't interested in what they have to say. And so they won't come to you. And I thought, wow, like that is a really deep wisdom. And I would say in my experience, Ruth Dare was a rare person, okay? And, uh, you know, in so many ways, uh, in ways that uh, really come down to, you know, they aren't appreciated until way later. You know, moms uh, have a tendency to be rare individuals uh, in our lives that, uh, that invest themselves in us in ways that, uh, you know, that, that are hard to explain. But I, I want to say this, you know, for those of you who struggle with, with uh, your experience with your mom, maybe it wasn't so great. Uh, please understand that this is a day to honor moms. And so we're going to honor the ones that, that, that did the job and invite everybody, uh, in spite of uh, experiences may not have been so good, to step into this world of being a rare person and uh, perhaps being the mother, uh, even if you don't have children, being a mother to, to others uh, that, that they need. Okay, so... What does it take to be a rare person? Okay, so first of all, keep a good heart. All right, so um, you have to decide that average is not your target. Okay, average in society often uh, it does not even meet uh, the standard of being successful at something. All right, and so uh, yeah, so Proverbs four twenty three and twenty four. You're familiar with part of it. Watch over your heart with all diligence for. Uh, from it flow the springs of life. In other words, the life that you're sharing with other people, the life that you're actually living, uh, has this way of arising from your heart. And Jesus is going to make that really clear a little bit later. Uh, but anyways, but put away from you a deceitful mouth and put devious speech far from you. So we're going to have to push things away in order to make room for the things that are right and good. And in Mark 7, 20 through 23, and he was saying, this is Jesus, uh, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man from within. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, and so on. All these things proceed from within and defile the man. All right, so Luke 6, 44 through 44. 45. Each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. The evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil, for his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. 
Okay, so First uh, Peter 3, uh, 10 through 11, For he that uh, will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. So we're going to be pushing things away and pursuing the things that are right and good if we're going to be others' uh, rare people, okay? So secondly, be formed by the work of Christ in us. If our life is a reaction to others, that's what we are, a reaction to others, not a response to to what Christ is doing. And so we want to be that response to, to what Christ is doing. In 1 Corinthians 15, 10, beginning of that verse, uh, Paul says this, by the grace of God, I am what I am. All right. So in other words, I'm responding to the grace of God and, and, and walking in the things that God has made possible for me, uh, rather than, um, <clears throat> you know, being a reaction to the people or circumstances around me. Philippians 2, 13 through 15, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Uh-oh. Amen. Let's go home and practice that. Okay, so that so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God, above reproach, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. In other words, be, you'll be rare people if you let God do that work in you. <clears throat> so you feeling unrewarded? Say it with me, okay? I do what I do because of who I am in Christ, not because of what others say or do. Say it again. I, I do what I do because of who I am in Christ, not because of what others say or do, all right? So then you have the importance of, of repentance uh, when we fail and forgiveness when others fail. Rare people need both, okay? Uh, we are going to make our mistakes. We are going to fail sometimes. And so what do we do? Do we deal with it honestly? And if we do, uh, repentance and forgiveness are the things that are going to come up as important because Philippians 2.12 says this, that we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, understanding what God has done for us, uh, we uh, understand the huge privilege of being able to access the grace of God here. And so we need to, to own up also to our failures. Okay, so humbly, humbly, you know, that's how you approach God. That's how you approach somebody if you've, if you've done wrong to them. All right, repent. Okay, repent is simply this. Think again. All right, come to a new conclusion. Admit that you were wrong. I admit that I was wrong. I say I'm sorry, and I mean it. All right, and I ask, please forgive me. And I'm not sorry for what I've suffered. I'm sorry for what I caused you to suffer. Okay, so um, forgiveness is, is simpler, uh, but sometimes more difficult, which is I forgive you. I give up my right to hold this against you. All right, three levels of forgiveness. Uh, giving up your right, asking uh, the authority that's in the earth to give up their right. And then finally, uh, as Paul and, and the martyr Stephen uh, called upon God not to uh, take this up against them in the judgment, okay? So, uh, but just simply, I give up my right, okay? I give my right to hold this against you. know, sometimes we can do that because we're big enough. You can say, you know what? I can forgive that, ah, you know. And then there's other times when we can say, well, yeah, I've done the same thing. Of course I forgive you. But what if uh, what you have to forgive doesn't meet any of those uh, qualifications and you just have to uh, reach into what God said, and what Jesus told us, okay? Sometimes we need to sit at the foot of the cross and uh, where, where Christ reminds us of these words in Matthew 6, 9 through 15. Pray then this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, oh, oh, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven, have forgiven our debtors, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, and then he goes on to say, For if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive you your transgressions. And so to be rare people like Ruth was, okay, she was a rare mother and God rewarded her. Let's 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 want to be those rare individuals and uh, and forgive uh, and ask forgiveness when it's needed. Uh, you know, be a response to the work of Christ in us and keep a good heart. Okay, Galatians six nine through ten says this: Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, this is the time of opportunity. Let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you, and we'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summer.